Uh, Granny Zedner, I believe that's our ring. I know his Lom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, at last, the big coming out party for Grandpappy Spears, or rather for Buster V. Davenport, has arrived, and all his friends have gathered at the schoolhouse to join in the festivities. It is Lum's hope and plan that some one of these familiar faces, set in familiar surroundings, will restore Grandpap's memory. As we look in on the little community today, the party is going full blast. And we find Abner in the middle of one group of merrymakers. Listen. <laughs> heavy, heavy hangs over thy head, but art the owner do to receive it. Fine or super fine. Fine or super fine. Hey, Abner, come over here a second. <laughs> I'm busy right now, Lom. Fine or super fine, Bessie? Come uh, this on. Is, just take <laughs> half a minute, Abner. Oh, all right. Here, Ruth, take my place here. Study up a good fine for Bessie. That, I tell you, make her go over and kiss Uncle Henry Lunsford or something. <laughs> Hurry up, Abner. Excuse him, Bessie. Yeah, I'll call it. I'll call it. What's the matter, Long? Another suspender button come off? No, I... I warned you about born a preacher's suit, Mom. Well, it's a way on or two little fur. Oh, it ain't that. Formal clothes are supposed to be a little tight, I think. Well, that sure is. Well, say, well, he's the only one in town that's got a swallowtail suit. I had to borrow his. Yeah. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't try sitting down in them britches. That's all I've got to say. Yeah. <laughs> They'll hold up all right, Miss Barton. Miss Barton. That one, what else you want to know? Uh, can you think of anything I forgot for this party? Anything you forgot? Yeah, it just seems like there's something I've overlooked. But for the life of me, I can't think what it could be. Huh. Now, law me, I don't know, Lum. Decorations are all up. Yeah, I thought about that. Folding chairs is all brought over from the church, and a pioneer was moved in. I don't believe you forgot nothing, Lum. Huh? I hope not. I, I want this to be the best coming out party Grandpap or any other Davy Tans ever had. Well, it's the best one i ever been to. I know that. It is a dandy. Has Grandpap's memory come back to him yet? I don't know. I ain't had time to notice yet. Well, I've been busy over there playing the game. <laughs> I think it's a little too early for that, though. Yes, huh? Yeah, he ain't had enough time for all these familiar faces to take effect on him yet. No. Uh, have you got your speech See? already? Oh, yeah. I have. Miss Hodgkins. Miss Hodgkins. You got it already, huh? Hey, oh, yeah. The speech studied up good. You have? Yeah, it tells all about Buster V. Davenport being one of our new citizens and how this party introduces him into Pine Ridge Society, official. Yeah. Miss E. Strong. Miss E. Strong. And a whole lot of junk. It's awful good. Well, uh, when you aiming on giving it, huh? Well, pretty soon now. Quick as everybody gets sort of settled down. Yeah. Everybody's here by now, ain't they? Oh, yeah, I reckon they're all here. Even Ed Backlin, he's always laid every place he's Commodore, Miss there. Commodore Quincy. Ambassador Mrs. Ambassador Blevins. There's Cedric. He ain't supposed to keep doing that all evening, is he, Lon? Well, Falling that way. Just supposed to announce the folks when they come in. Well, that's what I've tried my best to tell him, but he just keeps hollering out their names every time he sees somebody. Prince and Princess Hodgkins. There he goes again. Mr. Brigadier General Grandpa Master and Miss Aim. I don't know what to do about him, Lon. Me neither. I wish you'd stop it. I I'll get hold of him directly and give him a little talk. I wish you would. Maybe we made a mistake in having him be the butler after all. Yeah, well, you better do something before he embarrasses everybody to death if he keeps that up all night. Yeah, well, I'll catch him directly and put a bug in his ear. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I'm going to get on back. Huh? Put a bug in his ear. Yeah, give him a little hint, you know. That ought to do it. Well, that ain't very nice, Lum. That's a mean prank to play on a feller. Mean prank? Yes, sir. I ain't playing no pranks on him. All I'm well, going to do is Well, if putting a tell bug him. in a feller's ear ain't no prank, I'll never hear the one long. Oh, I never meant that I was actually going to put a bug right in his ear. Well, I don't know how else a bug could get there if you don't put it in. 
no bugs gonna crawl up there all by itself. You know that, Mom. You can't make me believe nothing like that. Please. I ain't trying to make you believe nothing. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I- I've heard a train fleas. Uh, they had some of them at a carnival over at Cherry Hill one time. Recollect? Mm, of course I recollect that, but when I said I, I was going to... I know Mom. Look, let me see them. Hurry up, let me look at them. Let you look at what? Hey, them train fleas you got, you sure kept that a secret. <laughs> I never had no idea you been training a batch of fleas. <laughs> Abner, I ain't been training no fleas. You ain't? Now, don't tell me they just picked that up by themselves, Long. Of course they don't. You must have trained them a little bit, Long. I know is you sure thought up everything for this party. I'll say that for you. <laughs> That's the best entertainment we've had yet over here. Yes, you want me to call everybody to order so she can start the show right now? Quiet, everybody! And hitch up, for goodness sakes. What's the matter? Ain't the fleas ready yet? No, and they never will be, because I ain't got no train fleas. Can't you understand that? You ain't? Of course not. Well, who's got them? Nobody's got them. Oh, somebody must have brought them along. They couldn't have found their way over here by themselves. Or could they? Depends on how good they're trained, I reckon. Come on, to goodness. If you don't get some of the crazy sideies in your head and you well, couldn't jar them out with a stick of dynamite. I still think somebody must have brought them on. We never invited them. I know that. I helped make out the invite list myself, and we never sent no invitations to flee. Abner, if you'll just give me one Did minute, Squire I can explain. bring them? No. Well, now, he might have. He, he used to be in a carnival once a long time ago. These fleas might be old acquaintances of his. Emma, will you hatch up for I whop you right on top of the head? Well, now, what have I did that was wrong? Nothing, except just act like an idiot, that's all. Huh? There ain't no fleas here, trained or no other kind. Ah. So just forget the idea. Drop the subject. Don't let me hear you mention it again. Well, all right, but I still think they're around here summer's long. You're going to surprise us with them. I know you are. And I'm going to find out who's got them, too. Well, yeah, that's fine. You do that. Yes, sir, I will. All right. And if you do find out, let me know. Well, don't worry. I will. Well, that's fine. Much obliged. Oh, not at all. Don't mention it. Don't mention it. And while you're hunting for the fleas, I wish you'd get hold of Grandpap and bring him over here. Grandpap? Yeah, I think it's time to present him to the folks now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll get him for you. I'll be right back, Paul. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. All right. Oh, howdy, Squire. Well, good evening, Lum. Well, it's a marvelous party, Lum. Marvelous indeed. The social event of the season, without a doubt. Well, thank you, Squire. Glad you like it. Are you having a good time? Oh, excellent, Lum, excellent. There's nothing that I like better than to mingle with my fellow man in a... Carefree evening of lively banner and good fellowship. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I love it, love. Yes, I do. I love it. <laughs> well, I'm proud to see you enjoy yourself, Squire. Yes. Say, Squire, could I ask you a question? Why, you know you can, Lum. I'm always more than glad to lend the benefits of uh, the meager knowledge I've gathered and to aid my good friends in any way whatsoever. Now, what's troubling you, Lum? Well, have you noticed anything I forgot for the party? Have yeah, got wrong? Yeah, all evening long I've had a feeling that I've overlooked something, but I can't think what it might be. Hmm. Why, well, no, Lum. From my observations, I would say that the party is complete and perfect in every detail. No, I don't think you've forgotten a thing, Lum. Well, that makes me feel a heat. It's better. a fine party. Yeah, I wish I could get over that feeling, though. More than likely, I've just worried too much about everything. Oh, without a doubt, that's it, Lum. I know it's been a strange only to get this party all ready. And by the way, Lum, I'd like to congratulate you on the whole idea of this affair. Well, thank you, Squire. Uh, that is, I mean, making Grand Bap the guest of honor and all a splendid idea. Yeah, well, we had to do something for him. Oh, yes. We yes. figured that. Getting him here amongst all of his old friends might bring his memory back by the quick as anything. Yes, they yes. They claim seeing familiar faces and doing familiar things will bring back their memories and cure amnesia. Yes, I've heard that, Lum. I've heard that. See, we got to get him cured up because he's the only one that knows the formula for making that secret rubber. Uh, what's that, Lum? No, I uh, said that wrong. Making what, Lum? The synthetics rubber. Mm-hmm. He knows that secret formula, you know. And if we can get his memory back, why, he can recollect what it is and we can start production. Mm, I hadn't heard about that. No. Well, it's a shame that a gentleman of his age is running around town under the illusion that he's some other person. 
Uh, what is that name he called himself? Uh, Jasper B. Uh... Buster V. Davenport. Yes, yes, a shame and a pity. I hope this party turns a trick long. Yeah, me too. But if it don't, at least ways it'll make him feel more at home in Pine Ridge and keep him from going back to Toledo. Toledo? Yeah, he thinks that's his hometown, you know. Oh. Wait a minute, I see Abner heading over this way. Will you excuse me while I make a little speech here, Squire? I'm going to introduce the grandpap formal to everybody. Oh, a very good idea. Yes, go right ahead, Lum. Go right ahead. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, quiet, please. Simmer down, everybody. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the harp strings of memory strike a tender chord as we gather here tonight at this beautiful party. As you know, this party has been given in honor of a, well, a new citizen of Pine Ridge. All of you know him in a... All of you know this man in a, well, a different way. Uh, uh, this is important. Just a minute. Uh, excuse me a minute, folks. What's the trouble there? Here, don't bend over. Uh, I can't find Grandpa nowhere. You can't? No, sir. Can't find him or the feller with the train, please, either one. And I've looked high and low for him. Grandpa. Well, he must be here somewhere. I've looked in every room in the Did place. you look out in the kitchen? Uh, he loves to nibble on things. He might be out there trying to get a yeah. little hand out. No, I went out there. He ain't back there at all. No, sir. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Huh? Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? Hi, uh, Granny. Now I know what it is I forgot for the party. Huh? I forgot to invite Grandpap. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I dog his lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John him down store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Grandpappy Spears' long-awaited coming-out party was held last night and proved to be a social and financial success. However, one little item kept it from being completely perfect. Social leader Lum failed to invite the guest of honor, debutante Grandpappy Spears. As we look in on the little community today, it's the next evening, and we find most of the members of the Golden Era Discussion Club gathered at Abner's house for their weekly meeting. Listen. Oh, I'm a cranky old Yankee and a cranky old tank. Wait a minute, Abner. You're uh, supposed to sing Al Tori. Uh, oh, all right. Let's try it again, man. I'm a cranky old Yankee and a clanky old tank, and I'm heading for a hullabaloo. I'll be riding in my tank through the Tokyo Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, long, wait a minute. I believe that's green. Oh, oh, now, somebody at the door, somebody at the door. Well, come here. Oh, well, howdy, Cedric. <laughs> well, howdy. Sorry for I'm late, Mr. Abner. Has so the what? meeting started yet? Oh, no, no, Grandpap ain't here yet. No, you're on time, Cedric. I thought that was him there. Oh, good for me. Howdy, Mr. Loom. That just sat on the sofa yeah, there, Cedric. Cedric. Good well, evening, Cedric. What a Mr. Ulysses. Was that you were singing or I heard you outside? No, I wasn't singing, Cedric. Oh, it's me and Abner. Yeah. We're thinking about changing this from the Golden Era Discussion Club to the Golden Voice uh, uh, Singing School. Yeah, dog, is that ain't a bad idea. You know what, Mom? <laughs> that sounded pretty good, huh? <laughs> I don't know them words very good. Hear that Harry Kessel singing it down there around the store today, and you can't understand nothing he says when he's singing. No, he spits all over you whenever he sings. Yeah, you can't understand the word. Er, uh, Cedric, did you see Grandpap heading over this way? No, Mom, I seen Mr. Charlie Redfield. Oh. Uh-huh. He's heading in the other direction, I think. I, I waved to him. Ah, uh-huh. ah. He waved back. Yeah, well, that's good. Uh, reckon how much longer we ought to wait for Grandpap long? Oh, five or ten minutes. If he ain't come by then, we just start the meeting. He can catch up on any culture he misses out on. Yeah, sure, sure. All we done was just wave at one another. Never said nothing. Hmm. I think that was on account of we used to fur apart. At least a block it was. Well. I couldn't have heard nothing if we had us something. <laughs> he might have said something to me, and I just didn't hear him. Uh-huh. 
I'm proud to hear that, Cedric. That's oh, interesting news. We just waved. I waved first, and Mr. Charlie waved second. Uh, Mom, you don't reckon Grandpa's mad at us, do you? Mad at us? Yeah, on account of you for getting the invite into his own coming out party last night. No, no, he ain't mad about that. He got there for the last end of the party. I think he had a pretty good time. Uh, how come you forgot to invite him, Mom? Oh, you know how it is, Ulysses. Hostess has so many things on his mind, he can't recollect every little detail. Yeah, well, see, Lum wanted this party to be a surprise for Grandpa. My dog, if it was, too. <laughs> when I went over to get him last night, he was sound asleep. Didn't want to get up at first. I might not have had to drag him all the way over the schoolhouse. Yeah, well, he was glad he'd come, though, I think. And I know he was tickled to death over all that Red Cross money for him to turn in. Yeah, I heard you raised over a hundred dollars, Lom. Yeah, a hundred and twenty-seven dollars and eighty-five cents it was. Yeah, cash money. Oh, from that standpoint, the party was a success. I'll say that for it, even if I did give it myself. Oh, it was a dandy, a dandy. It never got shut of Mr. Grandpap's ambrosia, though. Amnesia, said we. No, I'd never done that, I'm sorrowful to say. No. I thought sure getting all his old friends around him that way would make him recollect who he was, but no luck. Well, these ways it kept him from going to Toledo. Was Mr. Grandpap going clean to Toledo? Oh, yeah. He was going to leave yesterday. Even had a railroad ticket bought, and Mom talked him into getting that canceled. Yeah, he was around getting Red Cross donations, so I told him if he'd stick around, we'd raise a whole lot of money for him. And we done it, too. Well, Grandpap's still planning to go to Toledo, though, ain't he, Lon? Why, I don't think so. Well, I seen him on the street today, and he talked like he's still aiming to go sometime. Well, I do know. I thought he'd give up the idea. Well, I don't believe he did. I think we got to do something to get that idea out of his head. You can't let him go traipsing all over the country by himself. Leastways, not in his condition the way he is now. Why, Law, me, you know, he'd get lost just sure as a world. Of course he would. Yeah, yeah. Well, what does he want to go to Toledo for, anyway? Oh, he thinks that's his hometown, Cedric, so he wants to go back there and see his folks and his old friends. But, of course, he won't find them, because none of them ever lived there. Uh, Ulysses, you're the brainy feller in this club. Can't you study up some way to keep him from leaving town? Well, uh, let's see it, how long? Just study on it for a second. Yeah, okay. Wish I was going to Toledo. No, guess that grandpap's woman, Aunt Charity, just wore herself half to death if that grandpap was to leave. Yeah, poor old soul. She's worried enough as it is. Oh, just worried, yes, she is. Grandpap don't even recognize her. No, no. Living over there at Sister Simpson's boarding house and all, I feel awful sorrowful for her. Yeah. You know, they were so devoted, lived together with one another for 50-odd years. Why, sure they did, sure they did. Well, it's enough to kill her. She just went down something wonderful ever since this happened. Crying in a way is what Why, she Why, she is, bless her heart. Bless her little heart. Uh, how you coming there, Ulysses? Oh, uh, okay. Have you got an eye? No. Well, keep studying. Oh, uh, okay, Lum. The worst part about Grandpap's amnesia is that, uh, well, I can't talk about that. Huh? That secret that he had, you know. The, uh... Don't say it. Adam. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Rubber S- farm, you know. Synthetic. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, don't mention that. How about a bear trap? Huh? A bear trap? Yes, Mom. Just catch Mr. Grandpap in a bear trap, and I'll guarantee he won't get away. I don't think. Well, that hurt him, though, Cedric. Yeah, that idea ain't no good. Ain't Grandpap ain't no bear no way. Bear traps is for bears. Well, not all of them. Huh? You can catch other stuff in them. Oh. I recollect once me and Gomer Bates and Wimpy Foster went out there near old Piney Mountain and set a bear trap. <laughs> you know what we caught in it? A wildcat? No, Bob. Wimpy. Wimpy? Yes, Bob. You mean you caught him in the trap? Yes, Bob. That's what we done. Oh, my goodness. Well, what'd you do then, Cedric? And then we sat down inside Wimpy there and ate some sandwiches, and then we played Mumbly Peg for a while, and then Wimpy took uh, the trap off his foot, and we went home. Is that all? Yes, Mom. And then the next year, we went out again and set the bear trap again, and 
we never caught nothing that time. Well. So we went out again the next year, and that time we didn't catch nothing either. Yeah, uh, say, Long, I believe I got out of here. Then I... we went out again the next year and never caught no bears, and then the next year we went uh, out be again. Be quiet, Cedric. Let me tell my idea. Well, let here. me finish mine first. I'm getting to the interesting part now. Oh, well, hurry up. So the next year we went out, and Wimpy said that was getting off of monotony, so he stepped into the bear trap himself. Hmm. But it was so rusty, it just broke, so we threw it away, and that's all. Yeah, that was interesting, Cedric. Oh, want me to tell it over again? No, Cedric. Uh, listen, Mom, I know what we can do. We can have Uncle Henry Lunsford arrest Grandpa. Arrest him? Why, sure, just throw him in jail. That'll keep him from going to Toledo. <laughs> of course it would, but that'd hurt his feelings. Oh. We're trying, trying to make Grandpa like Pine Ridge. We don't want him to hate it. Oh. He's going to leave more than ever if he done a thing like that. Well, I don't much believe he would, Long. He likes that jail over there. Or at least way as he used to before he got amnesia. Don't you recollect how he used to spend most of his time down there playing checkers with Uncle Henry? Yeah, but he don't do that no more since he thinks he's Buster V. Davenport. Well, maybe he'll get to liking it again. Maybe this will bring back his memory. No, I doubt it. Well, now, at might. they used to sit there in that cell and play all afternoon. And of course, they all just played there because there's more comfort than anywhere else. Only difference now would be that Grandpa wouldn't go home at night. No, I don't like that idea, Abner. Somehow it don't seem right having him rested. Special when he ain't done nothing. Well, we can think of something. I'll sign his name on a check and then we can have him rested for forgery. <laughs> no, Abner. No use you and Cedric trying to get ideas when we got a brainy feller like Ulysses to do the studying for us. How you doing now, Ulysses? Okay. You got a good one studied up yet? Why, uh, what'd you say, Lom? I said, have you got a good one studied up? Oh, well, uh, yes. Well, good. And no. Oh. Uh, could I have about two more minutes to sort of polish it up a little bit, Lom? It's still a little rough, I believe. Yeah, we can so, but hurry up, though. Grandpa will be here any second. Yeah, okay. See, I, I believe I left out one of the years we went out and set the bear trap. Huh? Of course, it don't make much difference, because we never caught no bears that year, neither. Just believe I'll leave it out. Yeah, leave it out, Cedric. Lom, I still think getting him arrested is the best idea we've hey, had. Hey, Chef Abner, and let Ulysses concentrate. Oh. Yeah, I believe I'll just leave that year out. Is that all right with you, Mr. Lom? Yeah, that's fine, Cedric. Have you got your idea polished up now, Ulysses? Why, uh, no, it's a little rough, you ought to believe, Lom. Well, you better give it to us that way. We can't wait no longer. Well, okay. What is it? Well, uh, now, this is still in the rough form, you know, Lum. Yeah, we know that. Just tell us what it is. Well, it, uh, see, you wanted an idea for a bear trap, wasn't it? No, no idea how to keep Grandpa from leaving town. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, okay. Now, my idea, now, it's just rough, of course, now. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, okay, now, as I see the problem, uh, well, uh, looking at it from the other direction, uh, and wasn't that your phone, Abner? Don't stop talking to Ulysses. He's Abner can get the phone. Well, I don't like to bother a man when he's on the telephone, Mom. Well, he won't mind. Abner Peabody's residence. It's self doing the talking. Go ahead, Ulysses. Oh, yes, Sister Simpson. A message. He did. Oh, my goodness, Mom. He's done it. He's done it. Who's done what? Grandpap. Grandpap. He's already on his way to Toledo. Left town a couple hours ago. Oh, my goodness. Well, if I don't have the worst luck. You? What bad luck have you got? Why, after all the trouble of studying up that good idea in the mind, now can't you? <laughs> Granny's, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know his Lom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, Storm. This is Lom and Abner. see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Grandpappy Spears 
carried out his intention to go to Toledo, Ohio yesterday when he slipped out of town before anyone could stop him. Ever since he lost his memory and decided that Toledo was his hometown, he's been planning to go back there to look up friends and relatives, and now he's on his way, destined to learn a few cold, hard facts. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in the Jotham Down store and library. Lum is talking on the telephone. Well, now, don't you worry, Aunt Charity. We'll have Grandpap back here in no time at all. Oh, sure, nothing like that's going to happen to him. He's old enough to take care of himself. Well, now, you try to get some rest, and we'll let you know as soon as we find out anything. Yes, ma'am. All right, Aunt Charity. Oh, not at all. Goodbye. Yeah, poor old Aunt Charity. She sure is broke up by Grandpap running off to Toledo, ain't she? Yeah. Yeah, she's feared he'll get himself run over or something. Yeah. Just sitting over there studying up all the terrible things that can happen to him. Yes, huh? Yeah. She's liable to work herself up into a nervous breakdown. Oh, my goodness. Maybe you ought to have Elizabeth run over there and sit with her a spell, Adner. Try to get her mind off everything. Yeah, well, uh, Elizabeth's uh, already aiming to do that. Lom told me she's going over there. Oh, well, good. She had a couple of chores to do first there at the place. Patch the ground to plow up for spring planting. A couple of little things like that. Well, that won't take her long to do that planting. Oh, no, no, no. The way she plows, she'll be over there before you know it, hardly. Yeah, you still got that young span of mule? Yeah, yeah. She's going to make old ones out of them, though. She ain't careful the way she plows. Keeps them in a dead gallop half the time. I know it. I seen her a couple of months back when she's breaking the ground. Oh, Swan, they're going to have them in a dead run. Why, yes, yeah, she does. Go she down off of that hill just like a jackrabbit. She ever hangs that plow on a root, she's going to go clean over the heads of them mules. Well, she throwed herself out of the field twice last year doing the same mm-hmm. thing. I'm going to hitch her up to a plow someday and plow all day long with her just so she'll respect them mules. Wait a minute. Ain't right. I believe that was our ring again. Uh, oh, I don't know. I wasn't paying no attention. Hello, jot them down, store and library. At her seat, I feel. Oh, yeah, Dick. Run on you did, huh? Plow hitched on to you. Well, good. Good. That ought to find him. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, much obliged, Dick. Goodbye. Dick Huddleston? Yeah, he warned the Toledo police for oh. him to keep an eye out for Grandpap and send him back here. Well, how can they find him? They don't know Grandpap long. No, but Dick gave him a description of him. Told him that he had amnesia and all that. Told him to keep on the lookout for a fellow with a blank look in his face. They're liable to send Cedric Weehunt back. Er, no, Cedric ain't going, is he? No. No, no that's right. No. Oh, they'll find him right away. I know they will. Dog as I hope so. I believe I might not as worried about this as Aunt Charity is, you know what? Well, to be right honest, I'm pretty worried myself. But there ain't much more we can do now, except just wait till we hear from him, or from the Toledo police. I, 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 I believe that was our ring again, Mom. Thing's been ringing itself off the wall. Yeah, yeah, off a bit. Of Hello, bit. jot him down, store and library. Lum Edwards talking. Might be Lizzie. Oh, how are you, Professor? Uh, no, no, I don't have to get me. Oh, just tolerably. What's on your mind? Ain't got no phone out in the field there. Yeah? Huh. Uh, about how many? Oh. Any of this right, ain't it? What? Well, I'll do something about it right away, Professor. Oh. Yeah, you. glad you brung it up. All right, sir. Goodbye. What's the matter, Lom? Professor Sloan having trouble over at the schoolhouse? Yeah, a little. It's like everything always happens at once. Hmm. Never rains but what it pours. Yeah, look. Rains? It ain't raining, Lom. Who said it was? Just look outside there. The sun is shining bright as anything. Dog as long, maybe you need some glasses. No, I don't need no glasses. Well, I... it ain't raining, I can tell you that right now. I know it ain't. All I said was it never rains but what it pours. That's just a old lettered saying. Oh. Uh, Means that when you get troubles, they always come in a bunch, like bananas. Yeah, well, that's right, I reckon. First, Grandpap leaves town, and Professor Sloan has some troubles, and now you need glasses. Abner, I don't need no glasses. Well, Lom, if you'll just step outside, you can see for yourself there ain't a drop of rain falling. Not a single solitary drip. Damn. No, sir. All right, I'll take your word for it, then. All right. 
Never would have known it if it hadn't uh, been for you telling. Well, that's all right. I'm proud to help you. Now, now, if you want me to lead you around any place, just say so, Mom. Well, that's thoughty of you, but I'll try to struggle along by myself somewhere. Right? Yeah, well, all right, but now, if you need me, I'll be right here. Don't right over here, Mom. Maybe you can't see me. I'm sitting right here across That's the fine. Well, much obliged. Oh, not at all. Not at all. Now, let's drop the subject. Yeah. I, I know just how you feel. We just won't talk about it no more. That suits me fine. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Professor Sloan. What's bothering him, Mom? Well, he says there's quite a few of the scholars that ought to have their teeth looked after, and nothing's being done for them. Well, why don't they go to the dentist? Doc Fisher will take care of them good. Doc Fisher ain't here no more. Huh? He got drafted into the Army about a month ago. Doggy, that's right. I forgot about that. Yes, sir. He's busy keeping the soldiers' teeth in good condition. Is that what he's doing? Oh, yeah. Well, the soldiers ain't supposed to bite them Japanese ones, are they? No, of course not. Well, I never thought so. Guns are better than teeth for such work as that long. You know, now that I think about it, Abner, this is a serious situation, not only for the youngins at school, but us grown-up adults, too. Huh? Do you realize that if a fella got a toothache in the middle of the night, there ain't nobody in town that could help him? He'd have to go clean to the county seat. Dog is he good, wouldn't he? Huh. And I don't think anybody's hardly got enough gas coupons to get him there. No. And he wouldn't want to wear out his number 17 coupons walking all the way in there, neither. Of course no. not. Oh, it's a serious situation, all right. Yeah. Something's got to be did right away. What can we do? You reckon we ought to call a meeting of the school board long? No, that takes too long. I'll do something more direct. Direct. Yeah, I'll cut out all that red tape and save some time. Why, sure, that red tape. Yeah. What red tape? Oh, you know, all the stuff that you get tangled up in. Stuff that takes a lot of time. Bicycle tape? No. Well, you can get tangled up in that, but it ain't red, Mom. You, you mean that adhesive tape? Of course not. Well, that ain't red neither. I, I use that was red tape. Why, sure, I know what I'm talking about. Well... Bicycle tape is black, and that adhesive tape is white. I know what color they are. Hmm. Mom, I promised I wouldn't bring up this subject again, but now you better go have Doc Miller look at your eyes. Abner, my eyes are perfect good. Anything in the world wrong with them? Well, all right. Have it your own way. But if everything looked hazy to me like it was raining... Then I found out I was colorblind on top of that. Now, I'd listen go to... here, Abner. I, I never said nothing. Just forget it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it bring it up. Uh, now, tell me what you're going to do about this here uh, dentist situation. Mom. Well, I don't know for sure, but we've got to get a dentist here in Pine Ridge some way. I know that. Yeah, we ought to have one. Yeah. Maybe we could run to some of the dentists at the county seat and see if they wouldn't like to locate you. Just move here? Yeah, we could guarantee them a lot of business. No competition. Yeah, they'd be the only one in town. I believe that's the thing to do. Get some paper and I'll dictate a letter right now. Yeah, yeah, I'll write it. I can do it. Yeah. Get some carbon paper, too. We'll want to make several copies. All right, all right. We send one to every dentist in there. Make it a sort of a circular letter. Yeah, that's a good... Circular letter? Yeah. Well, Mom, we can't send no circular letters. We ain't got no round envelopes to put them in. Round envelopes. Why, no, look at here. You don't need round envelopes for a circular letter, silly. Well, it ain't going to be easy to fold a round letter so it'll go into a square envelope, I can tell you that. Oh, for goodness sake, I never said a round letter. I said a circular letter. Huh? Any of them pieces of paper you got there are the right shape. You mean these here with the square edges? Why, sure. You call that a circular letter? Can be, yes. I told you, Mom, here, you, you better take my glasses or do something. You can't see nothing no more. Abner, my eyes are all right. Now forget it. Uh, all right. Sorry. Bring it up. Go on. Start dictating the letter. Got the carbon in? Yeah, it's in. All right. Uh, see, we start out. Dear Mr. Dennis. Dear Mr. Dennis. Uh, yes. Due to circumstances over which we ain't got no dentist in fine. Uh, uh, just now. a minute, just a minute. How do you spell due to? D-O-T-O. Oh, oh, sure, it's two words. Due yeah. to circumstances over which we ain't got no dentist in Pine Ridge now, there's a good opportunity for a new man to Wait, start up here. not too fast, not too fast. Hold it, hold it. Wait a minute. Let me look Wait at that carbon start. coffee. I want to see if you're doing a good job there. All right, just a minute. Start up. Here. 
Yeah, here you are. Look at him, right there. Well, I'll swan to goodness. What's the matter? Are you sure you put the carbon paper in there? Why, sure. It's right there. There it is. Oh, my goodness. Abner, you's right about my eyes. Huh? I can't see a blessed thing on this paper. You can? No, sir. I'm going right out and find Doc Miller. You watch the store for a while. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll look after things long. Because I feared it'd happen someday. Whereabouts is my rain gold? Huh? Oh, that's right. It ain't raining outside, is it? No, you won't need it long. Let's see here now. No, oh, because I never know that I wrote on both sides of this paper. Well, for the land's sake, the writing on the back side all looks backwards to me. All right, doggy. Hey, Lom! Lom, wait a minute. Wait for me, Lom. I've got to have my eyes looked after, too. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I dog his lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, because of the draft, Pine Ridge has found itself with no dentist. So Lum has written to all the dentists at the county seat in the hopes that one of them will be willing to move to Pine Ridge and fill that vacancy. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library talking on the telephone. Listen. Hello? Is that you, Mose? Uh, this is Abner. All oh, tolerably well. Is Lom still down there getting a haircut? I'm right here, Abner. What do you mean he ain't there? I just heard him talk, Mose, and I put him on the phone. For goodness sake. There, I heard him again. He must be there. Uh, let me talk to him, Mose. This is important. Abner, I'm right here. Now, listen here, Mose. Don't you try to josh me. I know Lom's voice when I hear it. I can hear it just as plain as if he's standing right here beside me. Well, <laughs> you ought to, because that's exactly now, what I'm Now, listen, if you don't stop saying that, I'm going to get a baseball bat and come down there and walk Abner, you out. Abner, give on... me that receiver. Huh? Well, for the land sake. <laughs> well, uh, never mind, Moles. Mom's here now. Goodbye. Mom, how'd you get over here so quick? Just walk, that's all. Oh, you must have run some of the way. You was at the barber shop not two seconds ago. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I left there a half hour ago. Lom, I heard you on the phone over there just as plain as day. No, you never. I was standing right here when you heard me. You were? Why, sure. Well, how could you be standing here and be down at the barber shop at the same time? Now, how could you do that? One, two, goodness. You well, can't now, understand tell me. How, how could you do it? Abner, that's just so ridiculous. I ain't even going to answer you. Are, are you magic? No, of course not. Well, you must be. Doggy, I'd love to know how you done that. Come on now, tell me, Lon. Abner, just forget about that. Now, there's some trick to it. I know that. And I, doggies, I'm going to find out what it is, too. Oh, all right, you do that. I will. Now, tell me what you're trying to call me at the barbershop for. It, it ain't done by throwing your voice, is it, Lon? Answer my question, Abner. Huh? What was you trying to call me for? Oh, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Dick Cottleston phoned over a while ago, and he said there was a telegram for you, and I figured you'd want to get it right away. Oh, well, I done got that. Got it? I stopped by Dick's store on my way back from the barbershop. My dog, as you did get over here in a hurry and stopped there at the same time. Hmm. Uh, was it from Grandpa? No, it was from a dentist at the county seat. Oh, uh, dog, I was hoping it was from Grandpa. Well, I was, too. I thought, sure, we'd get a hearing from him, but... It wasn't even a postcard. Huh. Reckon he's in Toledo by now? No telling where he's at. That's where he lit out for her. Poor old feller. Well, what did this dentist want, Lon? He, he surely wasn't answering that circular letter we sent out already, was he? Yeah, that's what it is. Well... He must have got our letter in today's mail and sat right down and telegraphed us. Hmm. Huh. Never wasted a minute's time. Well, I do know. Is he going to take our suggest and locate here? Well, he wants to look the situation over first, he says. 
He does, huh? Yeah, he says he arrived Monday to look the situation over. Huh? Well, here, I'll read you the telegram. Got it right here. I'll talk yeah, to you. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Uh, uh, what does it have to say? Read it. It says, uh, quote, Mr. Edwards, Pine Ridge, Arkansas. We'll arrive Monday to look over the situation. See, well. Oh, guess what he said. Huh. Signed, well. Dr. Samuel W. Snide. All right. Dog is now there is a good telegram. That is a damn. Yeah, it's well wrote. Wish I'd get a telegram like that. Uh, what was his name? Snide? Snide. Samuel W. Snide. Oh, I bought a horse that was a Snide once, they said. But I said so, too, after I tried to drive it. You can just tell by his name that he's a big importance dentist. He can, huh? Oh, yeah. More than likely, he even went to college and studied it. Well, I do know. Huh. He must be serious about his work. Well, he's that type of fella. He is, huh? I can tell that by his handwriting in this telegram. Or, I mean, by the way he type wrote it. Or whatever they do to telegrams. Yeah, well, now, exactly what does he mean there at Long by wanting to look over the situation? Oh, he wants to see how much business he can count on doing here and how bad everybody's teeth are and... Where he can set up an office. Well, he just wants to get an idea of the generality of things in Pine Ridge. Ah. Bogus, where about you reckon he can find a place for an office, Long? Oh, he can more likely rent that office Doc Fisher used before he went into the Army. Yeah, yeah, he could. Be a little crowded, I reckon. Crowded? Yeah, Doc Fisher's warmer and fix that place over in the sleeping room and rent it to a couple of defense workers. Oh, she has, huh? Yeah, one of them works on the night shift with Cedric. Well, we can fix up the feed room then. Let Dr. Snide use that till he finds some other place. The feed room here at the store? Yeah, it might be sort of handy to have a dentist in the store. Why, sure. <laughs> Anytime we get a toothache, we can just step back there and get her fixed up in no time at all. <laughs> sure. And it might bring us in some new customers, too. Oh, That's sure. That's a good idea. It Didn't is. I thought huh? about that before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can let him use the store for the waiting room. Then we can sell the patients a lot of stuff while they're waiting. If they recollect to bring their rationing books along, we can. Yeah, we'll have to remind them of that. Oh, can't sell nothing without them coupons. I know. We can get out some handbills saying, save tires and gas. Do your shopping and get your teeth fixed all in one trip. That's the way. <laughs> yeah, that'll uh, bring them. Doggies, that's a good one. Uh, I know something else we can do, too. Long. We can have some Saturday specials. Saturday specials? Yeah, you know, like, say... Well, a pack of potatoes, a bucket of lard, and one tooth pulled a dollar forty nine cents. Oh, no, that wouldn't work. Well, why wouldn't it? Well, it just wouldn't, that's all. Folks is always looking for bargains, ain't they, Long? Yeah, but they just have their teeth pulled when they need it. Huh? They wouldn't want to have a perfect good tooth taken out just because somebody gives them a special price on a certain day. Well, they might if the price was low enough. Ah, uh, bounds your dad, Ezra Seastrunk would. He, he'd do anything to save a nickel. We put on enough of them specials, Ezra won't have a tooth left head. No, he wouldn't do that. Ah, no. uh, I bet you he would. You better forget that idea and help me clean up the feed room so Dr. Snide can move right in if he wants to. Yeah, yeah, sure. I still think my eye is a good one, though. Okay, I might try that out myself. I like it so well. Oh, Leave my will. Stop mumbling and grab the broom and come on. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Uh, now, what all do we have to do to fix the feed room up for him, Mom? Oh, not much. Have to move all them boilers and stuff we're using to mix up synthetic rubber in. We will, huh? Yeah, we won't need them till Grandpap gets his memory back and recollects the secret formula. No, might leave one of them back there in case he gets to pulling somebody's tooth in there. Hollering so loud they're disturbing us up in the store here. He could just shove their head down one of them bollers back there and put those on. Oh, they ain't gonna bother us. They won't, huh? He's a painless dentist, I think. He is? Well, good for him. Well, that's another thing. We gotta get him a dentist chair of some kind. Dentist chair? Yeah. Rocking chair ain't no good. It ain't, huh? No, every time you go to pull a tooth, you just pull them right over on top of you. Yeah, that's right. And still, if you got the rocker pointed right, those sort of towards your front, and then when they rock back, just hold on, that tooth will come out of there. That yeah. might be a good idea. Long. Good solid tooth, though. You pull him right over in your lap. Yeah, <laughs> you might do that. <laughs> That'd look funny to see the dentist sitting in old Ezra Seastrunk's lap, wouldn't it? <laughs> I know. Maybe Mose Moose will let us have one of his barber chairs. Huh? He can't cut but one feller's hair at a time, no way. No, but somebody's might now all are sitting in that other chair talking politics or something. Uncle Henry Lonsford or Charlie Redfield, somebody's in it, Long. Well, he might let us rent it. That'd be a good way of getting shut of Charlie Redfield. Yeah, but Long, they'll come right over here. They'd follow that chair anywhere. 
Well, better not sit around that chair long with Dr. Snyder around. He'll pull all her teeth out. <laughs> Send him a bill for it. Good enough for that old Charlie Redfield. <laughs> yeah, get a chair for more. That's what we'll do. Yeah. What else will we have? To, I guess that's about all we have to get. Because Dr. Snyder more than likely have his own pliers and drills and whatever tools he uses. He will, huh? Oh, oh another thing. We'll have to have some old magazines. Oh, magazine. Yeah, for the patients to look at. Oh, oh. Dentist's office always has them in. Yeah, yeah. But they ought to be old ones, about 1928 or back. Yeah, that's right. Reckon what they always have such old magazines for? I don't know. There's something I've always wondered about myself. Well? Must be some good reason for it, though, because it's a hard job finding any that's that old. Why, sure, it'd be a heap easier getting new ones. Oh, yeah, a whole lot easier. But it must be important to have old ones or they wouldn't go to all that bother with themselves. No, no. Well, you take Doc Miller, he still has copies of Muncie's magazine in his office over there. I know he has. Last time I was there, I read part of a continued story in the McClure's. Well? Oh, he's got all kinds of old magazines in there. Had a copy of the Saturday Blade and Ledger and the Grit. Well, I do know. Yeah, yeah. I saw him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got a few... Uh... What's that? Oh, Everybody's Magazine. Yeah, there's one store in the St. Nicholas that he's got there that I've read a thousand or a hundred times. And the Comfort. Yeah. Always has a copy of that in it. This store that I love to read so well over there, it's about a little boy named Bobby and a bear named Brownie. And one day, Bobby caught the bear stealing some jelly and stuff. Yeah, and all right, don't bother to tell me the story. Well, it's interesting. I right? don't care. Well, it's nice. It's all right for me to tell it out loud, Lord. I know it is. I've read it myself. Oh. Uh, read it that time I went to see Doc when I had the shingles. Ah. Uh, Besides, it was honey he stole, not jelly. It wasn't no such a thing. It was jelly. I can show you the exact page where it says all brownie right, was all in All right, the... let's not argue about that. Huh. Just yeah. neglect to round up a bunch of old magazines for Monday. Oh, I know something else we ought to get for him, too. Some tanks of gas. Gas? Yeah, they always give the patients some gas when they put a filling or something. Pull a tube sometimes. Oh, sort of a filling station, huh? Well, yeah, yeah. that's a good stuff. <laughs> Pretty good, Abby. You can get off some good and stuff. <laughs> good for me. Good for me. Uh, now, about how much gas does he give them? Oh, I don't know. Four gallons? Oh, no. Well, they wouldn't want to waste a good gas coupon getting any less than four gallons long. Coupon? Yeah. They don't need no coupons for the gas he gives them. They don't? Of course not. Not even one single stamp out of their A-book? Not even that. I dog as long that Dr. Snide ain't going to set one foot inside this store. What's the reason he's not? You just write him a letter and tell him to stay out of Pine Ridge or I'll take a baseball bat to him. For goodness sakes, what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about just as well as I do. Neither Dr. Snyder or nobody else is going to run a black market here in Pine Ridge. I can tell you that by I believe that's our ring. I dog as long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Love and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, several days ago, Lum wrote to various dentists at the county seat to try to induce one of them to settle permanently in Pine Ridge. Dr. Samuel W. Snide replied immediately, and today he is expected to arrive to look the situation over. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner in their jotting down store and library, preparing for the new dentist's arrival. No, Miss Barton, the dentist ain't here yet, but uh, we expect him any minute now. Yes, Ma. A cavity. Well, good. Good for you. Uh, Abner, write Miss Barton's name down. She needs some dental work done. 
Oh, yeah, 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 I'll get it. Yes, Ms. Barton, just come over to the store this afternoon and bring any of the young ones that had any teeth trouble, too. Yeah, all right. Thank you, ma. <laughs> Not at all. Goodbye. Hey, doggy, that makes six patients we got for Dr. Snyder already, Long. Six, huh? Yeah, that's what I got down here on this paper. That ain't a bad start for a dentist. You know? I know. Six patients right the first day he hits down. Yeah. That ought to convince him Pine Ridge is a place to locate at. Yeah, and one of these, Long, is Winifred Redfield. She's the best one patient a dentist could have, all them big teeth she's got there. Oh, yeah. There's practically a year's work right there. She looks like she's got a mahjong set in her mouth. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. Let's see now, who else in town might need a tooth pull? Well, law me, ain't we got enough patients for them already? Let me look here at this list there. Yeah, that's pretty good, but wouldn't hurt to get one or two more. Wouldn't, huh? Yeah, we want to make sure that he decides to locate here. That is, we need a dentist in town. Yeah, yeah, we need one, all right. Special for the school young uns. You know, we might get a fight started, get down there around Caleb Weehunt's blacksmith shop, and they're playing horseshoes down there. We can get a bunch of them to argue, and I believe we can get a fight started. They might knock a few teeth out, Lom. No, we better not start nothing like that. Anna. We can get old Caleb mad enough to fight if you want to do it. Wait a minute. Just happen to think of something. How are your teeth, Abner? Huh? Are your teeth all right? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're fine. You sure? Well, I, I think I'm sure. Mm. You know, sometimes a fellow can be walking around with some awful bad cavities in his teeth and not even know it. He can't, huh? Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden one day, bang, all his teeth is gone. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, how's that tooth you was having trouble with about a month back here? Uh, oh, oh, what law? That don't bother me no more. Or uh, I don't think it does. You know, Emmer, you could have an internal cavity in that thing. Could, huh? You never can tell. Huh? Come here a second. Let me press my thumb again in your jawbone there. Press your thumb? No, law, that tooth don't bother me no more. Much. Just a minute. Huh? Does that hurt? Well, a little, I believe. Now, let me press again the tooth real hard. Uh, that hurt? No, oh, no, don't press the heart long trying to lose that now. Don't press it. Abner, you better have that looked after. That might be serious. You reckon it is showing up? No, I wouldn't take no chances on it, I you. Hmm. I recollect one time Al Potter noticed a little pain in the side of his jaw and never thought nothing much about it. Two weeks later, he had to have every tooth in his head taken out. Al Potter? Yes. Oh, Doggy Tom, I believe that tooth is beginning to ache again, sure as a word. Is it sure enough? Yeah, I, I believe it's sort of starting to throb a little bit, Lama. Oh, the pain's getting something awful right there. Good, good. Huh? Granny, that's good news. Dr. Snide can start working on you just as quick as he gets here. Good for you, Ed. Well, uh, Lom, what about is that ball of oil of clothes, Ed? No, now, don't. Don't put nothing on that tooth to make it stop aching. Let the dentist take care of it for you. Well, now, Lom, I've got to do something for it. That pain's might not kill me right there, Lom. I'll just use a little bit of that no, stuff. No, now, Abner, that's liable to cure it before Dr. Snide gets here. That's what I want to do is cure it, Lom. Well, what do you want to do, learn everything? Well, Lom, I can't stand this pain the way it is All now. All right, baby, put a little oil of clothes on it then. Just a little tiny bit, though. Not enough to get shut of the thing. Ah, uh, well, whereabouts is it at, Mom? I think it's sitting over there behind the school door. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I recollect putting it there the last time my tooth was aching. I believe I'll call up Alf Potter. He might still be having trouble with his teeth. What's his ring, Abner? Do you know? I don't know, Mom. He ought not to have no trouble if he had them all pulled out, though. It seems to me like it's two. two longs and a short or two shorts and oh. a Oh, my oh, I better goodness. ring Mamie. She don't know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I believe that's him coming up out there now. Who, Al? No, the new dentist. Al? Look here, he's carrying a little black hand satchel. Bound to be him. They always carry them kind of satchels with their tools in them. Yeah, well, where's his white coat at? Ain't he supposed to wear a white coat? Well, they just wear them when they're in their offices. Working oh. on them, No, is my tooth is sure, children. So he looks like he must have slept in that suit he's got on there. That's a wrinkle, this one through the clothes I ever seen in my whole life. Mind now, mind now, don't be talking about this. Don't let me hurt his feelings. I won't. Now, let me do most of the talking. All right. Well, howdy do, sir. Come right in. Howdy do, sir. Just make yourself at home here. 
You're Dr. Snide, ain't you? Yes, yes, that's correct. Uh, Samuel W. Snide. Yes, Samuel W. Snide. Well, good. I- I'm Lum Edwards, and this is my assistant, Abner Peabody. I do. That's fine, fine. Now, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Dr. Samuel W. Snide, the uh, manufacturer of the True Fit Dental Plates. No, no, no slip, no slide. No slip, no slide. No what? No slip, no slide. I uh, didn't quite get you, Doctor. You better come over that again. Yes, well, I... I slipped. Yes, I... Oh, yeah, I... Pardon me, gentlemen. There, no slip, no strike. Well, let's talk business, gentlemen. This is a business mission I am upon, so let's not waste time on non-essentials. Let's come right out and talk straight from the shoulder. I'm, I'm a man. I'm a, I don't mince my words. You, you don't what? I don't mince my words. Well, what's that you're doing to him? Yes, sir, Oh. Yes. Now, how much business, gentlemen, how much bona fide business can you guarantee me? I, I want the true, true picture. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Dr. Snyder. we got a list of six people right here that are waiting to see you this afternoon. Hmm. And you can start working on Abner here right now. And who's Abner? Oh, that's me, Doctor. Yeah, Abner, shake hands with Dr. Snyder. Oh, he done yeah, made it. done made it, Mom. I tell you, Doc, my tooth is just aching something awful. Just to be honest about it, I just can't hardly stand it. Yes, yes. Well, well now, about my credentials, gentlemen. You want to know all about me, of course, no doubt. My background, my education, and my reputation and all. Oh, well, we're satisfied on that, Doc. We just want to get a dentist here in Pine Ridge, that's all. Yes, yes. As far as we're concerned, you can start right this minute. Yes, well, now about my credentials. Uh, Doc, just a minute. Uh, can't you do something for this tooth of mine? Yeah, you better take a look at it, Doc. Yes, all right, just a minute. Now, as for my credentials, here's my card. Just just look that over. Oh. Air aid warden. Well, you made a mistake, Doc. This is your air raid warden card. Yes, well, but it has my thumbprints on it, and there uh, you see, right there. That thumbprints never lie. They never lie. Uh, Any time you're in doubt who I am, just check those thumbprints, and you'll see that I am myself, not an imposter. Oh, I see. Uh, well, Doc, just a minute, instead of talking there, uh, what about my toothache? Yes, eh? now, for proof of my educational background, my, my dental college training, I wish to call your attention to this medal, this medal on my watch chain here. Oh, yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. Nice looking. Yes. What is that on there? A picture of a fella in short underwear? Oh, no, no, no. Track clothes. I received that for winning second place in standing broad jump. Standing broad jump? Yes. Six feet, one and a half inches. A good leap, gentlemen. That was in high school. Oh, right. Uh, exactly what's this got to do with your dental college training? Well, you have to go to high school before you enter dental college. Oh, she yes. sure what's the matter. Now, over here on my last chain, gentlemen, I have an elk's tooth. Mm. Did you pull that out of the elk's mouth yourself? No, no, no. I found this in a streetcar in Rockford, Illinois. Funny place for an elk, aren't it? Well, let's see that again. Yes. It's got a filling in it. Filling in it, ain't it? Well, it could be. Yes, it's a filling in it. You've been practicing, huh? Well, in a way, I... Well, I... You found that in the streetcar, huh? Jimmy, yes. My goodness, gentlemen. Rockford, Illinois. I advertised it in the newspapers for several days in the lost and found column, of course, you know. Ah. But the owner never appeared. Never appeared. Hmm. Now, as to my reputation... Hell, you can't read it. Uh, Doc, ain't you got something in that satchel there that you can fix up my tooth with? Yeah, you better do something for your toothache, Doc. Hmm. Wait. Mm-hmm. A toothache, you say? Yeah, it's just hurting something terrible. Well, I'll have to take, just take a look at that. Show me which one it is. Yeah, well, it's that right, right there. That's all right there. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Hey, don't try to swallow him yet. All right. Now, uh, 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 Mr., uh, I forgot the name. Uh, Peabody. Peabody, yes. Can you describe the pain, please? Well, it just hurts. That's all I know. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does it throb? Yeah, I saw it out. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And does it seem to shoot playing out in every direction once in a while? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You have it for a day or so, and then, and then it goes away and won't return for a couple of months? Yeah, exactly the way it does, Doc. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And have you used any special treatment? Well, I gently put some oil of clothes on it. Some oil of what? 
clothes, he says. Oh, yes. But Lord wouldn't let me put on enough to do any good this time. I see. But if you put on quite a bit of it, does it give you relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah. I, George, I believe I'll try that myself. Ah. Uh-huh. I've had the same trouble for years. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I know his lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. See what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the new dentist, Dr. Samuel W. Snide, arrived yesterday and is looking things over with an eye to settling down in Pine Ridge. To help encourage him to stay, Lum has invited Dr. Snide to be the guest of the Golden Era Discussion Club. As we look in on the little community today, we find the members of the club gathered at Cedric's home for their weekly meeting. Yeah, and another thing, I want all you fellas to act as cultured as you can tonight. I want Dr. Snide to see what high-class folks we got here in Pine Ridge. Well, okay, Lum. Yes, Mom. We'll be the culturedest one batch of humans you ever laid eyes on. Yes, sir. Say, Mr. Lum, exactly how do you act cultured? Well, I'll swan to goodness such a question, well, Cedric. Well, just try to act like you know something, Cedric. So sure. Act like you're awful brainy and all that. Yeah, like Ulysses. Oh, well, that's easy. Just keep saying okay all the time, is that it? Well, no, there's more to it than that, Cedric. Well, that's all Mr. Ulysses ever does. Why, Cedric, we hunt such tall. You see, Cedric, saying okay ain't the thing that makes Ulysses so brainy. It's knowing when to say it. There's the important part right there. Ain't that right, Ulysses? Okay. <laughs> there you see, Cedric. Just more. I mean, okay... Uh, Lum, has this dentist, this Dr. Snide, has he decided to locate here yet? Well, no, not definite, Ulysses. He's just about on the verge of it, though, I think. I figure that if we make a good impression on him tonight and act interested in dentistries and teeth and all that, I figure he'll decide to settle down in Pine Ridge. Well, sir, I hope he does myself. Tell you, we need a good dentist here the worst way. Okay, okay. Uh, is this Dr. Snyder a good dentist, Lum? Oh, yeah, yeah, one of the best, no doubts about it. Yeah, how come that he never knowed what to do about my toothache yesterday, Lum? Well, he just got in town, Abner, so he's more than likely wore out from the trip. Well, he just come from the county seat that's just 22 mile in there. I know, but you know how hard it is to travel nowadays worrying about your gas coupons and your cars and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh... Besides, your toothache's gone now, ain't it? Well, yeah, Lum, but he never done nothing first. Well, that may be the new modern dentist work. Might be, huh? Yeah. You think they ain't even doing nothing for you, but all of a sudden you realize your toothache's all gone. Huh? Them's a new scientific painless method, I think. Now, has he got a dentist certificate or anything like that, Lum? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's got a thousand or a hundred feet into it and stuff like that. Yeah, a whole pocket full. Showed him to us yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Air raid warden's card, a medal for the standing broad jump he went in high school, and elk's tooth he filled himself, and I don't know what all. Well, oh, because I wonder if he did do something for my tooth after all. Well, of course he did. He'll more than likely explain more about the scientific methods tonight in his lecture. Lecture? Is he going to give a lecture here tonight? Yeah, yeah, I thought it'd be a good idea to have him speak. Well. I want all you fellas to pay good attention to it, too, and act awful interested. Oh, uh, okay. And if you think of any good questions, go ahead and ask them. Just ask them, huh? Yeah, that'll make him feel important here and all that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Though, that I believe I, I, I'll ask him how he cured my toothache without me ever knowing it. That's what I'll do. No, no, I wouldn't ask him that. That might be a secret. Method or something. 
Might be hard. Yeah, ask him different questions on whatever subjects he's lecturing on. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, I reckon we ought to wake Grandpa Masters up for this long. This ought to be interesting. Yeah, if it won't make him mad, we might. Wish Grandpappy Spears was here. Meetings don't seem the same without him, hardly. No, sir, they don't. They just don't seem the same. Is Mr. Grandpap still in Toledo? Well, as far as we know, he is, Cedric. Ain't had a hearing from him since he left town. Not even a picture postcard with a X on it uh, showing what the room he's staying in in the hotel, you know. You saw that. So put an X and show the room he's staying in. Thanks, Mom. I got one for my aunt once, and she put a cross on it. Yeah, well, folks generally do that when they go on a trip summers, but we ain't heard a word from Grandpa. Of course, he might not be staying in a hotel. That might be. But my uncle one. put an arrow on his, right into his room. He did, huh? Well... Yeah. Here's where I live, right here. Yeah, well, either want to show where you live. That is, if you're in the hotel room. If you ain't, well, you wouldn't want to mark that place you weren't staying at, of course. Dick Huddleston checked with the Toledo police today, but they ain't so hiding her hair, Grandpa. Well, sir, that's a shame. I hate to hear that about that old man. Nice old Somebody at the door, Mr. Lone. Yeah, that must be the dentist. I'll let him in. Don't forget all I told you now, sir. No, we won't re- recollect now. Ask questions and be cautious, sir. Okay. Well, good evening, Dr. Snyder. Come right in, sir. Proud to see you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Here, I'll take your hat, Doc. Well, thank you. Just go right ahead on into the parlor there. Yes, splendid, splendid. splendid. Yeah, how do you do, Doc? I reckon you recollect me. I'm Abner Peabody. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, indeed. And I am Dr. Snide, Dr. Uh, Samuel W. Snide. True, fit, gentle, fight. No slip, no slide. Slide, Doc. Slide, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Doc, I'd like to have you meet the other club members here. Uh, this is Ulysses S. Quincy. Yeah, how do you do? You? Uh, how do you do? Uh, more, more than likely, the brainiest man we got in our club. We, 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 we. Okay. And, uh, this is Cedric Weehan. Cedric, you know you. Okay. And, uh, that's Grandpa Master sitting in the rocker there. Say, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, Abner better close Grandpa's mouth for him. Oh, no, 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 not yet. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Huh? My, 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 my. That left by cluster there ought to come out. Yes, indeed. What ought to come out, now? The lower left by cluster. That tooth right there, see? Oh, that, that right there? Yes, that yes, yes. Very bad, very bad. Let me see. Uh, Where about is it there? Uh, that tooth right there, Cedric. Listen, listen right there. Well, don't take up all the room, Cedric. Let me see, too. Yes, Mom. Can you see all right, Mr. Ulysses? Uh, okay. I never did see no cuspidor in there. Ah. Uh, By cuspid, said Ah. Uh, What's wrong with the tooth, Doc? Well, you see, Mr. Eggers, it ought to come out. Yes, yes, indeed. Now, with that tooth out, he'd be a new man, new energy, a new life. Randy, you don't suppose that tooth is what makes him sleep all the time, do you? Well, keep us strange things. Strange things indeed, Mr. Eggers. I could be wrong, of course, but in my opinion, this is a sick man here, and all on the count of one little tooth. He sleeps hardy, though. Well, you know your business, Dr. Snyder. Well, well, on the other hand, I could be wrong, but uh, I like to come right out and say what I believe. No be kicking around a bush, you know. I don't mince my words. If you say he's sick, he's sick. That's all we are to it. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I wonder if somebody would be kind enough to get me a table knife. Knife? Yes. What are you going to do, cut the tooth out? Oh, no, 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 no. No, I just want an ordinary silver table knife. Mm. I just want to probe a bit. Tap around, you know. Well, uh, Doc, don't you think you ought to wait till tomorrow? We ought to get on with the meeting. Besides, he ain't hardly got no money. Well, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Health comes first. Never put off to tomorrow what you... Uh, what did you say, Mr. Edwards? No money? No I'm money. afraid not, Doc. No money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, well, now as I look at that tooth again, it doesn't look quite so bad. Wouldn't hurt to wait a week or, week or so. Haste makes waste, you know. Yeah, yeah, I've always said that myself. In fact, is that the old letter saying of mine? Yeah. Well, let's all sit down then and get the meeting early. Wait a minute. Ah. Uh, all right, Granny's, if Grandpa Master's too sore to come out, let's have it taken out. Me and Abner will pay for it, won't we, Abner? Why, sure, every nickel of it, yes, sir. 
I can't see how taking it out will help him, but the doc knows what he's doing, don't you, doc? Well, we try to serve the best we can, yes. Now, if somebody will get a table knife or something similar... Ta- oh, yeah, I'll get one, Cedric. Ask your mama for a table knife. Yes, ma'am. I want to be sure of our ground before we proceed further. I like to always be sure of my ground. It's a policy I follow religiously. Yeah, this is sort of a peculiar case, ain't it, Doc? Yes, yeah, sir. I was just sort of thinking that myself, Mom. Well, well, now, yes and no. It is and it isn't. You see a case like this now and then, and then and then you won't. They come and they go. Ah, uh-huh. Exactly what's wrong with the tooth, Doc? Is it the wrong shape or something? Well, Mr. Edwards, yes and no. The trouble is, it ought to come out, Mr. Edwards, my dear friends. Now, you take a case like this... Here's a knife, Mr. Doc. Is that the right kind? It could do, my boy. It just could do. Just a case knife. <laughs> yes, I think that could do very nicely. Now then, let's just tap a bit on this tooth here. Here, uh, let me see now. Here, now move back, Cedric. Well, well I want to see too, Mr. Edwards. Please, here. please don't try to run. So yeah, quick. stand back, Cedric. Oh, yes. thank you. <laughs> Now then, let's try this here. Hmm. 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 Hm
Well, that, that idea ain't going to help him get any business, I can tell you that right this minute. Listen, Admiral, that's just a professional expression. He don't actually take a shingle and hang it up somewhere. He don't, huh? Of course not. It's just something that he has his name printed on. His name? Yeah, Dr. Samuel W. Snyde, dentist. Oh, I see. <laughs> sure, what's the matter? He prints his name on them, huh? Yeah. That way, folks can tell what kind of work he does and where his office is at. Why, sure, 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 yeah, yeah, I know what they're for. Of course, I believe little cards would be better for him. Little cards? Yeah, that's going to be awful bulky carrying a big batch of shingles around with him, Mom. Be a heap easier to print his name on some of them little business cards like Squire Skimp does. That's what they call him. Wait told a him. minute. I never said he's going to carry no batch of shingles around with him. I know you never long, but that's what they always do. Carry them around, pass them out to everybody. They meet somebody and hand them one of their cards or shingles. He'd have to. Generally, they leave a stack of them down at the barber shop. Or Abner, I'm them. talking about putting I up a sign. I know what you're talking about, Long. And that's why I say little cards would be better than shingles. A bundle of them things ain't going to be easy to tote around all over town. Them things are heavy, Long. I know they're. That's the reason I tell you. And he don't look none too strong, neither. Well, facts is, he's sort of skinny and weak looking, if you want my honest opinion. Abner, Dr. Snide ain't going to carry no bundle of shingles around. Well, what's he going to do then? Have somebody else carry them for him? No. Haul them around in a little wagon? Of course not. I, I believe that little Barton boy's got a wagon he's outgrowed. I believe his Paul told me that the other day he'd like to sell it. We can get that for him. I'll call up right now and see if we can borrow that hey, wagon. Get away from that phone. Huh? Dr. Snyde don't want no little boy's wagon or nothing else. Well, Lom, them shingles ain't going to follow the dock around by themselves. I can tell you that right now. He'll have to drag them or something, and that'd be heavy dragging a big bundle of shingles. Greeny, Abner, someday you're going to drive me stark, raving, mad, crazy. Huh? Ep, will you listen to me for half a second? Why, sure. I've been listening to you. Ain't said a word myself, not a word. Go ahead. Go well, ahead. All I've been trying to tell you is that Dr. Snide's going to put up a sign out in front of the store so that folks will know that his office is in the back of the room there, in the feed room. Ah? Uh? He ain't going to tote no shingles around. Hey, doggies, now you're talking sense, Lom. Yes, sir. Now, that's a lot better than that first idea you had. That I had? Yes, sir. I'm proud you changed your mind. Good for you, Lom. For goodness sake. I was saying to Elizabeth just the other day, I said, oh, Lom, makes a lot of mistakes, but sooner or later he can see where he's wrong, and he's smart enough to change his mind. You said that, huh? Yes, sir. That's just what I said. Mm-hmm. I said, all I have to do is just point out the lump where he gets off the track. That's all there to it. No fussing, no arguing, nothing. Yes, sir, I said, old lump's all right. That's what I said. I told Liz about that. I said, he's all right. Awful thought of you to say that. Why, it weren't nothing. Ain't nothing any fella wouldn't do for his friend and partner. Well, just don't bother to say it to nobody else here. Huh? I don't want you to overdo this friendship. Oh, why, Mom? I'll be glad to do that much for you any old time. Yes, sir. Thank the world and all of you. Max says, I'm always bragging on you that way, Mom. I sat there and talked to Elizabeth about you by the hour. Tell her what good friends we are. No, I just love to do it. That's fine. <laughs> you can always depend on me. Old Abner, your friend. That is you. fine. Just friendship, that's what it is, just friendship. Mm-hmm. Just old-fashioned friendship, that's what it is, puts me and you. Yeah, well, if we're such good friends, Abner, maybe you'll help me paint up a big sign to put out in front of the store then for Dr. Snide. Why, sure, just anything at all, old friend. Anything you want, did you can depend on me to do it. I'll help you do anything. Uh, now, what is it you want to see on the sign? For sale? For sale? Yeah, uh, for sale, one bundle of good shingles. Well, I'll swan to goodness. Back again. Well, ain't that it? Of course not. Well, now, Lom, we ought to get rid of all them shingles you bought some way. They'll just go to run. Abner, and... I never bought no shingles. Can't you understand nothing? Never bought them? No. Hey, dog, as long you are smart, you know it. I'm proud I said what I did about you to Elizabeth. You knowed enough to talk this over with me before you went ahead and did anything. Yes, sir, you're smart. You've got a brain in that little old head of yours, Lom. 
I'll have to tell this to Elizabeth when I go home for supper tonight. She'll add more to hear. Don't bother. Oh, she'd just love to hear about you, Lum. She likes you, too. Thinks you're smart. She, she's always saying that she thinks you're smart. Just thinks the world and all of you. Just like me. We are three of the best friends in the world, I can well, tell you that. That's nice, I must say. I, I feel the same way about her and you, too. But I, I wish you wouldn't talk about me so much. Oh, <laughs> Now, that ain't just like you. You're just self-unconscious, Lum. That's what you are. Maybe that's it. Don't like for folks to be talking and bragging about you. Now, uh, uh, what was you want on this sign, old fella? I'll help well, you. Well, I told you once it's a sign with Dr. Snide's name on it. And some advertising telling what a good dentist he is and all that, of course. Oh, sure, yeah. We'll put that on. Yes, sir. That's a good idea, Lum. Nobody you would have thought that up. That's a good we'll idea. We'll decide what we want to say on the sign, and then you can go ahead and paint a big one. Old friend Abner, I'll do it for you. And then we can nail it up in front of the store quick as it gets dry. Yeah, yeah. And it ought to take us long to study up what to say, neither. Smart as you are and all of <laughs> No, it ought to. Well, let's see. I uh, reckon the first thing I ought to say is, uh, well, put his name down there, Dr. Samuel W. Snide. Yeah. Uh, how about this? Dr. Samuel W. Snide, champion dentist. No, no, that wouldn't... Uh, they don't have champion dentists. Well, he's a champion. He's got that medal on his watch chain. Well, that's for winning the standing broad jump when he was in high school. Well, that makes him a champion. We wouldn't have to come right out flat-footed and say what he was champion of. No, we got to be honest about this, Abner. You can't do business no other way. Oh, uh, well, let's see. Uh, uh, how about this? Dr. Samuel W. Snide, teeth pulled inside. Teeth pulled inside? Yeah, see, that sort of rhymes. Well, that's get folks all mixed up. Oh, uh, uh. wouldn't know if you meant inside the store or inside your mouth. Well, it could mean both. Of course, if you want to make it a little clearer, why, well, you could say teeth pulled inside out. Or, I mean, teeth pulled out inside. I reckon that's what I mean. No, I don't much like that idea. Well, let's see. Uh, how about this? Teeth pull while you wait. Well, that's better. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait a minute. That's silly, though, come to think about it. Naturally, they'd have to wait if they're having a tooth pull. Not if they had false teeth, they wouldn't. Last night, Dr. Snide wanted to pull a tooth out of Grandpa Master's lower plate. Well, that was just a mistake, though. He never knowed it was a plate. Oh. Uh, Anybody could make a mistake like that. I still like that idea, teeth pull while you wait. No, we need something that makes it sound like Dr. Snide does just a little bit better dentist work than anybody else. Oh, does a little better work, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. That's what'll get him the business. Sure, sure. Like that old lettered saying of mine, make a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door. Uh-oh. I wouldn't have said that. Now, yeah, let's see now. What can we say on there, then? <laughs> For goodness sake, Abner, ain't you going to say nothing about mouse traps? About mouse traps? Why, of course not. Oh, that's a relief. Must not have heard what I said. Why, sure, I heard you. you. You said if you make a better mouse trap, the world will be the path to your door. Well, ain't you going to ask me if Dr. Snide's in the mouse trap business or something like that? <laughs> no, of course not, Mom. <laughs> He's a dentist. Well, I'll swan too good. See, that's just the old Eddard Sam, Mom. I'll, I'll be dead good. Yeah, see, it don't actually mean a feller's making mouse traps. It, it's just an expression. You, you understand now? If that don't beat the bugs are fighting. Huh? Abner, will you watch the store a minute? I want to run down to the barber shop and tell a feller down there something. Why, sure, <laughs> run along. I'll finish up the sign, old friend. Yeah, I'll be right back. Right, take All your right, time. Man, I've heard everything now. <laughs> On to get a sick eyes. A dentist making mouse trap. <laughs> Don't get old Lum is a fine feller, but he can get himself the worst mixed up of every one human I ever seen in my life. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I know his lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now? 
Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the citizens of Pine Ridge are resting easier now that Dr. Samuel W. Snide has decided to hang out his shingle and take care of their dental needs. Lum and Abner are busy helping him fix up the feed room, which he will henceforth use as his office. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in their jot-em-down store and library. Lum is talking on the telephone. Listen. Well, I suggest you come in about two o'clock, Miss Abernathy. Yes, Mom. The dentist will be here then, I'm sure. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right. Goodbye. Yeah, there's another patient for Dr. Snyde. Yeah, how come he ain't in his office this morning, Long? Oh, I sent him over to the schoolhouse. Schoolhouse? Yeah. Ain't he sort of old to start into school? He ain't going to school, silly. I just sent him over there to make arrangements with Professor Sloan for examining the scholar's teeth. Oh. That's the main reason we got him to come to Pine Ridge. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Besides, he's already been to school. He has, huh? Well, show us where you win that medal for the standing broad jump. Oh. Well, for the land's sakes, look out yonder, Abner. Huh? Ain't that Mousy Gray? Mousy Gray? Why, no, Lock. Why, it, it, it sure is that him. Why, George, I never <laughs> knowed he was in town. Yeah, he must have got himself a furlough. Right? Yes, sir, oh, must have. Oh, well, Mousy Gray, look at that. <laughs> well, yeah. how do you, Mousy, old boy? Yeah, come on in here, soldier boy, and let us get a good look at you. Well, hello, love, Abner. Uh, Grannies, it's good to see <laughs> you. Sit down here and tell us all about yourself. Yeah, tell us everything, Mousy. Don't leave out nothing now. Just sit down right there, right oh, there. Oh, Grannies, it's good to see you. Yeah. We just feared they'd shipped you off to Africa or somewhere by now. Well, sir, I think our outfit is getting ready to move out, but I can't tell you where, though, Long. Oh, of course not, of course not. That's a military secret, more than likely. Yes, sir. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't Africa, though. Or maybe even Europe itself. You know, there's a big invasion being planned now. No telling when it might start. Are they sure enough planning the invasion, Long? Oh, yeah, we're on the move now. We've taken the offense, either. Well, good for us. According to what I've been reading in the papers lately. But here, don't let me do all the talking. It's you we want to hear about, Mousy. Yes, sir. Uh, well, what all have you been doing at the camp? Well, sir. Did you know Cedric's working at the defense plant now? Graveyard shift. Yes, sir. You wrote me about that. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did. Hey, did I tell you, little pearls went away to a nursing school, Mousy, and we got a hearing from her just a couple of days ago. She's doing right good there, I reckon. They got her counting blood now. Counting blood? Yeah. Said she's being learned how to take up blood count or something like that. <laughs> I don't understand how she tells us in her letters such big words. <laughs> yeah. Well, go on, Mousy. What else do you know? Well, sir. I don't reckon you know about Grandpap running off to Toledo all by himself. He's got the amnesia, you know. Yeah, he fell on some ice one day out here in front of the store, and ever since, why, he thought he's a feller named Buster V. Davenport from Toledo, Ohio. <laughs> yes, what do you think? So he went back there to try to find his real age. Poor old fella. Yes, sir, and we ain't heard a word from him since he left town, either. Oh, everybody's worried half sick to death about him. Especially his woman, Aunt Charity. Oh, yeah. Hey, say, we got a new dentist in town, Mousy, uh, Dr. Snide. He's setting up an office right back here in the feed room. He, if you got any teeth you want fixed, well, I believe we can get him to fix them for you for nothing, just while you're here. Well, <laughs> let's not bother with that right now, Abner. Uh, let's hear what else Mousy has to say. Oh, sure, yeah. Go on, Mousy. Tell us everything. I'll tell you all about the Goshens is having a new baby later on. Yeah, a boy. Right. Weighed seven and a half pounds, I believe it was. They named it Emmett Jr. after his Paul. <laughs> his name's Emmett, too, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know Emmett, Master. Well, go on, go on. Tell us all about your regiment and everything. Well, sir, I don't think I've got time to tell you any more right now, Lom. See, I'm supposed to meet my wife, Gussie, at 10.30. Oh, well, you got... Let's see, you got five minutes yet. You ain't told us half the stuff about yourself yet. Go on, talk fast as you can. Well, sir, I'll tell you... You know, we don't get to see you very often no more. Why, I get to no. hear you tell them interesting stories. I don't know how many weeks since you was home last, Mousy. Then here you are getting ready to ship out to Europe for summer. Is there anything you need to take along on that trip, Mousy? Yes, sir, just name it and we'll get it for you. Anything at all that you get might... Get it if we have to steal it. Well, no, sir, the Army furnishes us about everything we need, I guess. Well, I, Grannies, I know one thing... <laughs> 
can do that'll help him when he gets over there, Abner, and that's to buy more war bonds than he ever did before. Buy more war bonds? Yeah. Well, law me, law we can't afford to buy more than we're buying right now. Oh, yes, we can. How? Uh-huh. There's lots of things we can get along without and use the money we save for bonds. Huh? Just think of all the things our boys on the fighting fronts is getting along without. Yeah. Just stop and study about that a few minutes. Oh, sure, bound to be. It ain't going to hurt us none to make a few sacrifices here at home. No, no, of course not. But all them taxes we're paying, too. Yeah, I know they're high, but if we was living in some other country, we'd be paying more, more than twice that much. We would, huh? Oh, yeah. Bigger share of our money to the government than we're right now, bound you. More than twice as much. That's what I hear. Ain't that right, Mousy? Yes, sir. Of course, I don't see how bombs will do much good for Mousy. If he gets to fighting them Nazis over there, a pocket full of bombs ain't going to help him much longer. Well, that ain't the idea. You see, that? well, here, I'll draw you out a diagram and show you just how that works. Hand me that pencil there, Abner. Oh, yeah, yeah, draw diagrams. I love diagrams, just love them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, see, I'm pretty good hand at this, too. I'll draw it on top of this packing case here. Oh. And I want you to help me with this now, Mousy. Yes, sir. Now, to make an invasion of Europe, we got to cross water, ain't we? Yes, sir. The English channels are the Mediterranean Sea. So this big circle here will represent a body of water. The mill pond? Well, all right. For the sake of argument, we'll call it the mill pond. Well, you ain't made it the right shape then, Lom. See, the mill pond's got a sort of a bulge over here on this side here. Huh. Oh, well, right. all right. We'll put a bulge in it if that'll keep you happy. Yeah, put a bulge in, yeah. Now then, on this side here is Mousy's outfit. All these X's here. Yeah, which one is Mousy? This one over here? Mm, yeah, that one. Yeah, it don't look much like him. That's too big of an X. I believe this little X over here looks more like Mousy. He's a little fellow. All you know? right, all right. That's him over there, then. Yeah, that's better. That's him right there. I draw a circle around it so I'll know him. All right. Yeah. Now then, uh, I want you to help me with this now, Mousy. Now then, on this side is where the enemy's at. Right along, right along here. Oh, my goodness. Well, we better warn Al Potter then. That's right where his house is at. I better get him on the phone right Set now. Sit down, Abner. Don't call him up. We're just saying the enemy's there. That's all. Oh, uh, oh. Well, next time I see Al, I'll tell him to sort of keep watching things over there. See if he sees anything special. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. All right, now, we know that Mousy and his outfit already has got the guns and tanks and stuff they need to with. We've already bought them for them. We did? Why don't we do all that? Well, I mean, us home folks. How? Oh. That's where all that money went that we've been paying into war bonds week after week. Ain't that right, Mousy? Yes, sir. So here's Mousy and the other soldiers ready to fight, but first they got to get over to this side over here where the enemy's at. How? Oh. Now, how did they get across the mill pond? Well, the best way would be just walk around it, Long. They could head right out through Ezra Abner, Peace. Abner, the mill pond we're talking about is way yonder too big to walk around. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I know, I know how they do it. See, first two slim soldiers goes across in a boat, and then one of the slim fellers brings a boat back and picks up a fat feller and takes... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's the way you get geese and the fox across. No, that's right. Well, you have to go by boat, all right. Well, now, there's that old boat of Ulysses Quincy's down there, but that thing leaked something awful long. They'd never get across in that. And even if they did, they'd have to make a thousand or a hundred trips. That boat wouldn't hold but three fellers. Uh, how many is he in your outfit, Mousy? Well, sir. Wait, that ain't important. The, the point is that it takes big transport ships to get them across and big battleships to protect them. And it takes millions and millions and thousands of dollars to run them ships. It does? Yes, sir. Don't it, Mousy? Yes, sir. And where's all the money coming from? From the money us home folks puts into war bonds, that's where. Well, why don't we just use my idea and save ourselves all that money by having Mouse and his bunch just walk around it instead of going by boat long? I told you they can't walk around it. Well, all me, if they wait for a dry spell, they could wait across it. That thing ain't waste deep. You can't wait time. across the Mediterranean Sea, can you, Mousy? No, sir. And Mousy knows, too, because he's in the Army. All right, now... We've got the whole outfit landed on the other side. Now what happens? We can stop buying bonds. Oh, no, no. Now's when we really go to start and buying bonds. Ah. Uh-huh. Because now the main fight starts. Oh, And it's oh. up to us to keep furnishing food and ammunition for Mousy and his fellers day after day after day till Mr. Hitler's final leg. Well, good for Mousy. Who they from? And how do we go about furnishing all that stuff? 
The vittles, the bullets, the gasoline for the airplanes and tanks and all. You tell them, Mousy. Well, so just buy war bonds. That's right. And every day we fail to do that, we're causing Mousy's outfit to lose a battle. And that makes the war last just that much longer. We'll have to go without meat and potatoes and stuff just that much longer back home. All right, doggers, us home folks has got a pretty important job to do after all, ain't we? You're dead blame right we have. Well, say, Lum, I hate to break away, but I promised Gussie that I'd meet her at 10.30, and it's after that right now. Yeah, that's right, you're right. Well, you run along, Mousy, but come back this afternoon if you can, will you? Yes, sir, I sure will. Uh, be sure now. Yeah, see you later, Mousy, old boy. Yeah, so long. Yeah, so long. <laughs> Yes, it sure seemed good to have him sitting here in the store again, telling us all about himself. Oh, I could yeah. have sat here and listened to him for the rest of the day. Oh, tell some awful interesting stuff, too, about the Army and all. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's an interesting talker if I ever heard one. Yeah, I'm mighty proud of him. I believe that's our ring. I dog is Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Down store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the Jotham Down store now boasts a new feature, a dentist's office. It's located in the feed room, and it's run by Dr. Samuel W. Snide, maker of the Snide Fit Plates, no slip, no slide, and former high school standing broad jump star. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner in their store and library installing some dental equipment or something. what kneeling up a long strip of garden hose has to do with a dentist office. Well, I'll show you in a second. Uh, hand me one of them big funnels there. One of these here? Yeah. I'm going to put it on the other end of the hose near the feed room, and then you take that other funnel there and put it in this end of the hose here. Right here? Yeah. All right. It sounds like a lot of idiotic husking shuckings to me, though. Well, it ain't, though. This is important stuff. Huh. If we're going to have a dentist's office in the store, I'm going to see that it's run right. Well, all right, all right. I got the funnel in here now. What am I supposed to do next? Wait a second till I get this end fixed. Well, hurry up, Lum. There's a batch of grocery orders I ought to be putting up. Them folks is in a hurry for all stuff. All right, all right. We're all set now. Now, you talk into the funnel now. Talk into it? Yeah, just as if it was a telephone. Huh? Go ahead and talk. See if I can hear you. Well... What do you want me to say? I want you to say, uh, call in Dr. Snide. Call in Dr. Snide. Call in Dr. Edwards. Dr. Edwards wanted in the surgery feed room. Dr. Edwards? Yeah. Well, you ain't no doctor, Lum. Well, uh, just holler that into the funnel once and see if I can hear you. All right, all right. Call in Dr. Edwards. A uh, little bit louder. Call in Dr. Edwards. Call in Dr. Edwards. Dr. Edwards wanted in the feed room. Yeah, it's fine. That sounds good. Uh, uh, see if you can hear me now, Edwards. Huh? Dr. Edwards speaking. What is it, nurse? Nurse? Dr. Edwards will be right there. Hold everything. That is all. Can you hear me all right, Edwards? Well, yeah, I hear you, Mom, but I don't understand none of this stuff we're doing here. Well, that's nothing much to understand. You've heard how they always call the doctors that away in hospitals. In hospital. Yeah, don't you recollect in that movie we seen at the county seat how they's all us calling Dr. Kill, get you killed there all the time? Oh, sure, yeah. I've heard them on the radio calling Dr. Joyce Jordan. Yeah, yeah, I recollect. But, uh, Lum, we ain't running no hospital here. No, but a uh, dentist's office is sort of like a hospital in a way. Yes, huh? Yeah, and I want to do everything I can to build up Dr. Snide's practice for him. 
As oh. long as I was the one that got him to come down here and all, I sort of feel responsible for him making a success here. Well, yeah, sure. I'd love to see him make a success out of himself, too, Lum, but I don't see for the life of me how hollering into a funnel and 10 or 15 foot of garden hose is going to help him to be a success. Well, it makes everything look more businesslike, though. Makes a big impression on the patient. That's awfully important. It is, huh? Oh, yeah. So here's how we're going to work it now. When a patient comes in to see Dr. Snide, you tell him to sit down a minute. Then you go over to the funnel and say, Call in Dr. Eddards. Call in Dr. Eddards. Now, Lum, you know good and well that you ain't no doctor. Well, I'm practical the same as a doctor. I'm an assistant doctor. You are? Yeah. Well, now, when did you get to be that? Dr. Snide appointed me that just last night. Had a long talk with him. Well, I do know. (laughs) Did he sure enough appoint you as an assistant doctor? Yeah. Well, he didn't exactly find me, but I know that uh, what he was hinting at was that. Uh, he said last night that he figured he'd need a doctor's assistant, so I've decided to take the job. Well, good for you. You know, I always thought you had to go to college to take up something like that. I just chose my ignorance. <laughs> well, you do if you ain't smart enough to pick it up any other way. Ah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And here's something else. Now, if you work out good on this calling Dr. Edder stuff, I might find you my assistant. Will you sure enough, Long? I might. That'll make you an uh, assistant's assistant. I know he's good for me. I'll have to write that to little Pearl up at that nurse's school and tell her that I'm in the same business that she's in now. <laughs> Don't be now. Maybe I can understand all that stuff she's been writing to us and her letters. I never know what she's talking about. <laughs> oh, you catch on to this all right now. Uh, by the way, though, have you got a white coat? White coat? Yeah, we'll have to wear white coats around here now. Oh. Uh, or to have them kind that you slip over the head, I think. I know the kind them doctors wear ain't got no buttons down the front. Oh. Well, the only thing I got that's white that I slip over my head's my nightshirt, Mom. Now, I know I ain't going to run around the store all the time my nightshirt. No, sir. Well, no, of course not. That wouldn't look right. No, sir, I wouldn't do it. Of course, now, you might take one and cut it off around the waist. Huh? Get Elizabeth to hem it up for you around the bottom. No, sir, a nightshirt is a nightshirt, no matter what you do to it, Lum. And I ain't wearing nothing like that, I can tell you that right now. Oh, but I'd be the laughing stock of the whole town, running around in that cut-off nightshirt. All right, all right. You don't have to do it. I won't. But we ought to wear something that's like that to make it look right. Yeah. Well, I reckon I could wear the top part of Cedric's baseball suit. That slips on over the head. Of course, it ain't white, though. It's sort of gray with yellow stripes in it, I believe. Gray with yellow stripes. That, that'd look something wonderful, wouldn't it? Well, I don't know what to suggest, then. I've got an overall jumper where it's faded out, but it's sort of gray. It ain't exactly white. Well, maybe one of these white painter's coats would do the trick. It would, huh? Well, you leave it up to me anyway. I'll figure out something. In the meantime, I want you to practice up calling me on this loud speaking gadget here. Well, I don't need no practice for that long. I can do that easy. Call in Dr. Eddard. Ain't nothing to that. No, you ain't doing it quite right, though, Abner. Huh? I don't like to complain, but you don't sound professional enough. I don't, huh? No, you ain't got the right tone to your voice. Do it more like this. Call in Dr. Eddard. Call in Dr. Eddard. Oh, sort of like them fellas that call out trains and stuff. Huh? Well, sort of. Uh-huh. While you're practicing, I'm going back and nail down that rocking chair Dr. Snide's using for a dentist chair. Nail it down? Yeah, he says it still rocks too much. Oh, uh, say, Lum, uh, whereabouts did you get this piece of garden hole? We ain't got none in stock here in the store. Well, I never aim to say nothing. Don't you tell nobody, but I got it over at Ezra Seastrunk's place this morning. Ezra Seastrunk? Before he was up. Oh, my goodness, why, well, he'll be hopping mad when he finds out about that, Lum. You know Ezra. No, he won't. He's got about two or three hundred feet of it over there. He'll never even miss this little bitty piece I've taken. Well, I'd hate to be in your place if he does find out. That's all I've got to say. Yeah. That Ezra's got a temper. I ain't worried. Get on with your practicing there. I want to get that rocker fixed before Dr. Snide gets here. Oh, oh. All right, I'll practice. All <laughs> right, Dr. Edward. Call it, Dr. Edward. Call it, Dr. Kilda. Call it, Wonderful Dr. world. Oh, howdy. Uh, howdy, Cedric. Come on in. What are you doing talking into that funnel there? Oh, 
This is one of Lum's big ideas. Well, who was it you was calling? I was calling Dr. Edwards. Who is Dr. Edwards? That's Lum. He's a doctor do assistant know. now. Yeah. Do know. Yeah. Uh, see, we're trying to make it like a hospital that we seen in a moving picture show once. You, you talk in here, see, and then your voice comes out the other end of the hole there. I'll be doggone. Can I talk into it once? Why, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, wait a minute until I tell you, Cedric. You, you get on the other end, and me and you will talk backwards and forwards to one another. <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> like on a telephone, you mean? Yeah, sort of, sort of. Oh, Hurry up now. Get on the other end there. Oh. And, and don't talk too loud. I don't want Lum to hear us. Mm-hmm. He's back there in the feed room. That's him doing all that pounding, fixing a rocking chair or something. Oh, that's Mr. Lum back here? Yeah. Or uh, Dr. Ed or something. Yeah, yeah. All right, now, talk right into the phone, Cedric. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? What? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, Mom. Well, say something, Cedric. Oh, oh, hello. Well, say something else. What do you want me to say? I mean, what do you want me to say? Oh, just everything. Hello. Uh, say something about the weather. Mom. Talk about the weather. Hello. For goodness sake, Cedric. For goodness sake, is right. Uh, oh, hello, Lum. Hello. Hey, shut up, Cedric. Be quiet. Now, listen here. I put that contraption for the dentist's office in here not to be played with. Uh, it ain't for you two idiots to be playing with. Uh, Only time that's supposed to be used is when somebody's having trouble with their teeth. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, I don't want you to touch it for no other reason. Just teeth trouble, nothing else. Yes, sir. All right, that's better. Ah. Uh, is, I can't turn my back one minute to watch them two get into more trouble than a one-armed face. That blame it anyway. He's gone now, Mr. Abner. Think we ought to start talking again? Oh, no, no, he'll hear us, Abner. Well, we can whisper. No, he'll hear that, too. That long has got a set of years on him like a mule. Oh, no, it was just getting going good, too. Yeah. What were some of them things I said? I don't recollect, Abner. It was something pretty good, I know. I, I said hello there once, I think. Hey, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe that's all ring. Just a minute, said you can answer. Hello, got him down store in library. Abner Peabody doing the talking. Yeah, he's here. You're what? Oh, my goodness. Out of my way, Sidney. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. This is serious. Call it, Dr. Eddard. Call it, Dr. Eddard. Call it, Dr. Eddard. Call it, Dr. Eddard. What is it, Abner? What is it? Somebody with teeth trouble? Yeah, yeah. Who is it? It's you, Long. Me? Yeah. Now, listen here, Abner. I told you to stop playing with this contraption. You know I ain't got no teeth trouble. Yes, you have too, Long. Ezra Seastrong found out about you taking his garden hose, and he says he's coming right over here and knock your teeth out. Hey, Granny Zebner, I believe that's our ring. I dog is Lom, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Now, let's see what's going on down at Pine Ridge. Well... Lum has appointed himself as Dr. Snide's assistant, and so he's practically a full-fledged dental man by now. He's equipped the store with a makeshift loudspeaker system for calling the doctors, and he's named Abner as the assistant's assistant. As we look in on the little community today, we find the members of the Golden Era Discussion Club and Dr. Snide gathered at Ulysses' home for the weekly meeting. Yeah, that's it, Doc. Just sit right there. Well, I reckon we may as well get started with the meeting. We're all here, ain't we? Yeah, we're all here. Yeah. All except Grand Pappy Spears, but he's in Toledo. Has anybody had a hearing from the old fella yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we finally got a postcard from him. 
All it said, though, was that he'd got there safe and that he was staying at a hotel. He, he never said what hotel it was, though, and Lom says there's more than likely four or five hotels there in Toledo. Maybe even more than that. Well, wasn't there a picture of the hotel on the postcard, Lom? No, it just shows a picture of a cow that wins some kind of a prize at the Lucas County Fair one year. That don't tell us nothing about where Grandpa's at. No, I don't. He ain't entered in the stock show, I know. At least ways, though, we know he's all right. He ain't been run over or nothing like that. Well, I reckon we may as well get started here. The 15th meeting of the... Go- uh, what are you doing there, Cedric? Well, oh, just eating some gumdrops, that's all. Well, put them away. This is a time for culture, not gumdrops. You want to improve your ignorance like the rest of us, don't you? Yes, Mom. All right, then, pay attention. The 15th meeting of the Golden Era Discussion Club will now come to order. All them present or accounted for will please signify by the same sign. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Better nudge Grandpa Masters there, Abner. Yeah, I'll fix him. I'll fix him. Grandpa. Now, on account of having such a long meeting schedule for tonight, I hereby make a motion that we illuminate the reading of the minutes. Motion carried. Hey. Tonight, fellow members, we have a great treat in store for each and every one of us. Due to circumstances over which Dr. Snyde never got to give his lecture on the high-class culture subject of dentistry last week, he's going to give same tonight. Hooray! And so, with no further to do, I hereby turn the meeting over to our good friend and fellow member, Dr. Samuel W. Snyde. Put away them gumdrops, Cedric. All right, Doc, right up here. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, Mr. Edwards. I, I wonder if there's some place where I can nail up this chart. I, I said this chart. Oh, it's going to be an illustrated lecture. Yes, you'll see it. That's right. Yeah, well, Doc, I don't much think my woman, Carrie, wants you pounding nails or nothing around the living room here. Well, here, maybe we can just hang the chart on the back of this tall chair here. Will that do, Doc? Yes, that will be splendid, yes. yes. Yeah, help him with it there, Abner. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Here, Doc, give it here. Anything here. else you need for your lecture now, Doc? No, that's all nice, I guess. You want some gumdrops, Mr. Doc? Why, uh, do they stick to the teeth? I say, stick to the teeth? Yes, Mom, they sure do. Well, I'd better not risk it then. Uh, oh. Here, Doc, is that chart all right there now? Yes, pleasant, pleasant. All right, everybody quiet then. Proceed, Doc. Yes, thank you, Mr. Edwards. Uh, members of the Golden Era Discussion Club, in my lecture tonight, I will attempt to show the close relationship of dentistry and culture. I will show you why good teeth are necessary for clear, distinct artic- artic- speech. Ah. First, let us consult the chart and grasp a cursory knowledge of the oral cavity. I said the oral cavity. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. It's a good idea. Now then, now then, this area you see here, this shaded area, is called the gooms. The gooms, spelled G-U-M-S, gooms. You mean gums, Doc. Abner, don't show your ignorance. Well, we all just call it gums, Long. That's old-timey. All us dentists call it gooms now, I think. That ain't the way it's spelled, though. That don't make no difference. It's pronounced gooms now. Proceed, Doc. Yes, yes. Are there any questions so far? Yes, Mama, I got a question, Mr. Doc. Splendid. What is it? Am I eating goom drops? <laughs> For goodness sake, Cedric, hatch up. Go on, Doc. Yes, yes. Now, we're referring again to the chart now. Right below the gooms, we have the teeth. The teeth, gentlemen. Hmm. Yes. Each tooth, as indicated here, is composed of dentine surrounded by the cement of the root and the enamel of the crown. Now, uh, just what do you mean by dentine, Doc? What is that? Well, uh, <coughs> dentine? Uh, yeah. Dentine is... Oh, I know. It's some kind of chewing goom. <laughs> Abner, don't try to be so smart. Oh. Well, dentine, as we think, us use the term, it's... Uh, <clears throat> uh, by George, that reminds me, I've got to make an important phone call, patient, you know. Uh, do you have a phone where I can talk privately, privately, Mr. Quincy? I say, Mr. Quincy? Why, well, yes, uh, right out there in the hall, Doc, is a phone. You can just close the door there. You'll be alone. Splendid. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll be right back. You carry on for me, Mr. Edward, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll carry on. Well, I reckon that's what an assistant doctor's supposed to do anyway. All right, uh, referring to the chart again, gentlemen. I say gentlemen. These things you see right here are known as uh, teeth. 
since we've done been over that long. Well, I was just reviewing that part. Oh. Uh. Make sure everybody understands it. Ah. Uh. Do you understand it so far? Yes, Mom, I do. Uh, okay, here. Good, good. I ref- uh, referring to the chart again, we have, uh, yeah, let's see here. Uh, these are the gooms up here, and these are the teeth here. Gooms. When you come right down to it, there ain't a whole lot more you can say about the subject. Uh, wait a minute. Here comes Doc. He can explain all this I've been telling you. Uh, better take over again, Doc. Yes, 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 Mr. I explained everything to him. Oh, that's fine. Well, how far did you go get on a chart? Well, I got down to the teeth there. Oh, that's splendid. Right. Now, now then, the teeth are called by various names. I say names. Some are incisors, some by cuspids, some... Now, just a minute, Doc. You ain't answered my question yet. Uh, I beg your pardon? I asked you a while ago what dentine was. Oh, yes, yes, yes. To be sure. Dentine is a calcareous material which composes the main part of the tooth, that is, the ivory. Oh, I see. Okay. Now then, some of the teeth are called incisors, some by cuspids, some canines, and others molars. Now, now, which are which, Doc? Uh, which are which? Yeah. Oh, that's a very good question, Mr. Quincy. Very, very good. To the point. I, I I like to think of the teeth as so many little men. So many little standing broad jumpers. Uh, by the way, did I show you gentlemen the medal on my watch chain? Yeah, you showed that to us, Doc. Well, I received that for winning second place in the standing broad jump when I was at high school. Ah, uh-huh. Six foot two and a half inches, gentlemen, a noteworthy leap. I said a noteworthy leap. Yeah, I know you said that before. Yes. I was all bone and muscle those days. Not an ounce of fat on me. I say not an ounce. Yeah, well, now, which teeth are which, Doc? Yes. Well, by rights, I should have won first place. An injustice was committed that day, gentlemen, an injustice. Hmm. Uh, uh, say, uh, 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 say, would uh, you gentlemen pardon me for just a second? I simply must make another phone call, another patient of mine. No, go right ahead. I'll carry on for you again. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Won't be a second. Yeah, let's see now. Getting back to the chart, uh, uh, maybe we ought to review again what we've learned so far. Now, up here is the gooms, uh, and Ma, here is we've the... we've heard all that a thousand or a hundred times. It don't hurt to review this stuff again. Huh. Especially when you're going to work up to be my assistant's assistant, Dennis. Well, why don't you just wait for Doc Snyder to come back, Plum? There's a fella that knows what he's talking about. Yeah, he did rattle off some pretty big words there, didn't Oh, he? yeah. And he explained all about dentine. Oh, he's brainy. There ain't no two ways about that. Is he as brainy as Mr. Ulysses? Oh, now, no, Cedric... Well, Ulysses is brainy in a different way from Dr. Snyde, Cedric. You see, Ulysses is more the type that... Wait a minute. Here he comes back. Uh, did you get your party all right, Doc? Yes, yes, all right. I did, yes. Now, let, let us continue now. Oh, wait. Did, did someone have a question? Hell, yeah, I did, Doc. I said, which teeth are which? Oh, yes, 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 I recall. Well, these three back here are the molars. The next two are the bicuspids. And this is a canine or eye tooth. And these front ones are the incisors. I see. Okay. All standing in a row like so many little standing broad jumpers. Hmm. By rights, I should be wearing a medal for first place, not second place. Now, what makes teeth decay, dog? It was politics. That's what beat me. Uh, what did you say, Mr. Prince? I said, what makes teeth decay? Oh, yes, yes. Well, the answer to that question, the generally accepted answer, I say accepted answer. By George, that reminds me. I promised another patient I'd call tonight and see how they're getting along. Will you excuse me again, please? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Doc. We'll wait. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So he sure is doing a big business now, and he works day and night. Oh, yeah. Phoning all the time. Well, if you're a good, smart dentist like he is, you can get that much business. Now, I wonder who this patient is he's talking to now, Ron. Let's open up the door and listen. Oh, no, Abner, that ain't polite. Well, if we're going to be assistant dentists, we ought to learn all we can about the work, Ron. Granny, that's right. Why, well, sure, we ought to know who his patients are. Well, all right, then, but just open the door a little now. Don't listen too good. No, we won't listen our best. Come on, Thurs. Quiet, now. Just step through the door. Dr. Snyder again, Mr. Simpson. Yes. Well, listen, Mr. Simpson. Will you get that book on dentistry out of my room again and look up just one more thing for me? 
I promise this will be the last one, Mr. Simpson. Yes, I think you'll find it on the third shelf.